with me. What was the influence that just pushed you over the edge? I shattered my feet in okay. a snowmobile accident. Hit a steel bin at 100 miles an hour in wow. one night. They gave me 30% chance of ever walking again. Wow. I seen the x-rays of my feet that were, the nurses were sick to their stomach, x-ray tech said, and worked for 30 years and never seen shattered bones before to powder. Wow. Yeah. And you're obviously walking again now. What, what was it that helped? Was it all the morphine or was it the... There was no, there was no, the morphine couldn't touch the pain. Wow. I, I would just drink it, I would take bottles of Advil and the only thing that would knock it down. What would the doctor say? Just they, like, they said, get a desk get job is what they Yeah. Did. Get so. used to life in a wheelchair? And, yeah. And yeah, make an adjustment. Mm -hmm. So then, how did you overcome it? What happened? And it just wasn't an option. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I just always had that picture that I'm going to walk. I had young children and things. There was still a lot I needed to do. So I just. Uh, I always thought it would be like in a movie where you see people learning how to walk again. Yeah. You get in these little bars and you start yeah. to walk. And nothing like that. No. <laughs> no. That was, I laid in bed for six months wow. and I totally lost my sense of balance. Like even to just stand upright, mm -hmm. that was all, all gone. So it, uh, it was a total, walked around on my knees with knee pads on for about three, two or three months. Awesome. That's intense. The creator brought me to my knees. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's one of the things that, uh, because my body took on so much toxin and uh, uh, some drugs and alcohol and things, I had appendicitis that was near rupture. During that operation, I had uh, woke up they didn't, uh, the anesthetic wasn't enough. I woke up halfway through the operation. Uh, tubes and stuff from my throat, I couldn't breathe. I collapsed my lungs. And I was, I crossed over for a period of time. Um, long enough to decide whether I was going to come back or not. And that was a turning point where I was able to say uh, I need to come back and help others to see. Uh. Because I had that close recollection of crossing over and then when I went through that cleansing process with the Hoffman group I basically became pure spirit in my body. I wasn't able to go around any people. I couldn't even fuel up my vehicle. I stayed out in Kananaskis for three or four months and that's how I was. I was in tune with nature, I was just, uh, yeah, so it is possible and there are people here, but it's just difficult to be in that state and be in a poor, like a, an environment that's not natural. Or so through these profound experiences, I mean the extreme pain and the uh, audio healing that you had to go through, were there any big lessons or anything that you've learned or figured out? Just to always connect with other people. That was something from last night. Uh, we did a little meditation where you, in your mind, write the word wellness on the blackboard. Then below it, you write the word illness on the blackboard. And then you see that the difference between wellness and illness is we and I. Wow. So if there's ways you can find a shortcut or advice to a shorter road to be able to help people avoid the, the trials and tribulations you went through, what advice would you offer? Um, when I come back, I, I wanted to be able to show people what it was like to, to just eliminate that fear of death. Mm -hmm. And the reconnection is the closest thing I've found in the state that uh, I've that session was the closest thing I found, the state that you enter in of uh, atonement and relaxation is 
closest thing I could find for sort of an explanation to the crossing over and being at one with the, the Creator. And that's the state we need to be in to heal ourselves. That experience when you actually crossed over, do you have much memory of it? I do now. I didn't at the time. It yeah. took quite a while to, to really uh, see what happened because when I come back, then I'll, I, just, I was drugged and lost a couple of years of time again. So it was a, a period of cleansing and through meditation and things, then I was able to recall the, the experience and um, the blessing that it was basically to, to just uh, see that it's nothing to fear. Yeah. It's, it's, it's part of life and we still go on. What can you describe from the, from the experience? Light. Light? Mm -hmm. yeah, we just become light. Uh, I just came this evening from the orb uh, presentation and it's just, uh, that's what it is. It, it just, there's no limits. Uh, everything is, uh, we're all one. We just return to that state and it's, uh, very peaceful. Yeah. Until you reach the bottom, as I have lots of friends have gone the addiction road with many different things, and until you slam that uh, that floor and fall through it in some cases, then you start gathering the pieces back up. Uh, I don't like to see people going through that, but those are some of the most tuned in people that... So do you think on a macro level, as a culture, do you think that's what it's going to take? Do our whole society have to slam through the floor and then we'll pick up the pieces? I hope not. No, I'm, I'm seeing that uh, um, there's enough that see that ripple. They see where that road's going. There's some really strong leaders in the spiritual community that have been there and that are going out and sharing their story and they're turning people around on a dime. That basically just by sharing, that's the power of sharing a story. It's, here's what the choices I made, here's where I ended up, try and uh, do some reflection time and see uh, where your choices are taking you. And, yeah, it's, uh, there, that's what we talked about the other day, the power of telling your story. Mm -hmm. It just words to me, but I don't know how it's going to affect other people. And, uh, Do you believe in, in duality? Do you believe that there is a force that is resisting this? Or is it just our own laziness, our own lack? Or is there a force that's intentionally somehow benefiting, somehow encouraging this downward spiral, spiral of our culture and our, of humanity. No, no, it's, uh, it's fear and fear is an illusion. So uh, when we can uh, focus our attention and move that pencil on the table and everybody gets scared of it, then you know you're not able to do it anymore. When I was able to have a clear vision of what was going to happen for the next three days, some of the things I didn't want to see, all of a sudden it just it went away. I wasn't able to do that. So, and 